A man who wanted to spread joy to children from Ukraine and ended up taking in people in need. An 11-year-old boy who made an inspiring journey with nothing but a passport, a plastic bag, and a phone number written on his hand. A veteran who took TikTok by storm and is now using his platform for good. And an 18-year-old who wanted representation in books, so she created her own. And a boy who wished for friends and got just that when 50,000 strangers wished him a happy birthday. Plus, inside the most Instagrammable bookstore in the world, all that and our most viral videos of the week, you're watching The Uplift. Hi there, I'm Nate Burleson. Welcome to The Uplift, the show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes. We have a great show for you today, and we start with a man in Poland who wanted to bring joy to kids who fled Ukraine and ended up doing much more. Kaylin O'Kane has more on the man inside the dinosaur costume. The kids need smile. They, they, they stand on the train station for like two days, sleeping on the floor. It's devastating. Tomas Zubinski is the man inside this dinosaur costume, handing out candy to Ukrainian children at the train station in Warsaw, Poland. The father of three says he was helping a friend's family who needed a place to stay. But when he saw other families who had been traveling for days without food, he wanted to do more. Sandwiches is a good idea. Uh, so my son, uh, He's uh, seven years old, and uh, uh, our friend and uh, Veronica, my girlfriend, start doing like 100 sandwiches, and they, uh, we brought them all together to the train station. But Tomas says it wasn't enough, so he and his friends decided to buy $100 worth of candy and head down to the train station, in costume, as a way to make the children he saw smile. Some of them just, you know, run and grab the old candies, how, how much they can and grab and run away. Some of them really scared to take one piece of chocolate and they like looking at me, can I have it? And I'm like, yeah, come on, take more. Take the, the lollipops, whatever you need. There was one girl who just didn't want to any candy, just hugged my uh, leg, you know, and just want to stand. She was like two, maybe three years old. And I want to just hug the leg of the Dino and stay like for two minutes just hugging it. It was deeply touching, seriously. I was like, seriously, start crying for 10 minutes. Uh, luckily, I'm in the costume, so sometimes I can cry and they don't see that. When he went viral on TikTok, his friends set up a donation page where people can give money, candy, and other toys. I can spend this money to buy them food, but it's gonna be like for one day. But I can give them smile and memories for a long time. The parents coming to me and, you know, Hug me and thank you, man, you're doing this for our kids. That was also deeply touching me because I know that if I'm going to be in a situation like that with my kids, I would love somebody to do that for my kids that also. To, for just this 30 seconds, this two minutes, uh, take them away from this stupid train station of sleeping on the floor and just uh, give them hope. He reached out to Sasha, the woman who took that viral TikTok video, to thank her assuming she was a volunteer also helping refugees. But he learned Sasha was a refugee herself and a mother of two young children bouncing from shelter to shelter. He knew he had to take them in. I'm gonna take you up from the shelter. I call my mom, I'm like, mom, we still have one free room because there's a family I really need to help them. The, the, the girl is amazing. And so now actually the, the floor there where you see the windows, so they staying there. It began as one man, a dinosaur costume and some candy. And now others are dressing up and visiting kids at train stations and refugee sites, continuing to spread the joy that Tomas started. I hope the 100 dinos gonna go from every city and do it because the whole point is to get uh, kids, uh, you know, smiles. So it's, I don't need to be by myself. If I can, uh, you know, inspire people, this is also something good. Even this one uh, moment for them could change the trauma to something positive. They need to, the, the, there need to be some positive news during this war. Nothing gets Barney, but I'll take this man in a T-Rex suit, handing out toys and candies, making kids smile, and they are in desperate need of a reason to, that's for sure. Millions of people had fled their homes in Ukraine and sought safety in surrounding countries. One boy is being held a hero for making that journey out alone at 11 years old. Natasha Larno, she has more on the inspiring child 
who has become the face of bravery. A plastic bag, a passport, and a phone number written on his hand. This is all Hassan had when he left home alone. At just 11 years old, he had to leave his home in Ukraine after Russia took over the nuclear power plant in his city. Hassan's mom is a widow and couldn't leave her own sick mother, so the boy bravely traveled 620 miles alone to Slovakia. Once Hassan arrived at the border, volunteers and authorities looked after him and used the phone number on his hand to call his relatives. The Slovakian interior minister said he won everybody's heart with his smile, fearlessness and determination, worthy of a hero. And Hassan's story captured hearts around the world. He is a face of bravery, determination and Ukraine. I have to admit, at 11 years old, I was not that tough. Well done, young man. Renowned chef Jose Andres isn't just known for his cooking, but his charity, World Central Kitchen. The organization immediately responded to the crisis in Ukraine, distributing food, including hot, fresh meals in five countries. As of last week, World Central served one million meals from 330 distribution points. One of their newest relief kitchens in Poland, near the border with Ukraine, has the capacity to scale up and cook 100,000 meals a day using 12 massive paella pans and 12 large ovens. One woman from Virginia has used her own kitchen to help that cause. Slava Duchek, whose family is from Ukraine, is cooking up the traditional beet soup, borscht, and is using it to raise money. Jan Crawford has the story. In Ukraine, they say that the redder the beet, the better. In this northern Virginia kitchen, Slava Duchek is making the traditional beet soup, borscht. And watch the broth transform into this dark, oh, dark, dark red. Just one ladle. It's yeah, her right. way of helping fight the war with online cooking classes to raise money. Why borscht? Uh, because it's probably the most Ukrainian thing there is. Slava, whose family still lives in Ukraine, watched in horror as Russians attacked. I just can't imagine how hard this has been. And we go from crying all day to trying not to cry. She turned her anguish into action. If I'm helping, I'm busy, and I don't have time to go crazy over all the events that are happening in Ukraine. She's helped raise almost $200,000 so far, most going to Chef Jose Andreas's World Central Kitchen. I think the whole world sees how brave and awesome Ukrainian people are. Never in my life have I ever been more proud to be Ukrainian and doing her part one beat at a time. Jan Crawford, CBS News, Herndon, Virginia. From beats in the kitchen to the heartbeat, turning her passion in the kitchen to a passion for the people. That right there is food for the soul. Kenneth Jerry is a veteran from Minnesota who made it big as a TikTok star named Patriot Kenny. He has more than one million followers and they came together to show support when he needed some help. Now. He's paying it forward. CBS Minnesota's David Schumann has the story. Hi. Hello. I'm Patriotic Kenny. Something very special is just moments away on this Zoom call. Vicki, a Navy veteran in Washington state, doesn't know the surprise she's about to receive or even the man she's speaking to. But her daughter does. I love your videos. They're amazing. 1.6 million people feel the same way. Kenneth Jerry, a veteran from Willerney, goes by Patriotic Kenny on TikTok, where his heart on your sleeve openness has proved irresistible. Donated $5,000 for a scooter for you. No, you're kidding. When Kenny needed a new mobility scooter last year, the kindness of his followers came through and they raised money to buy him a new one. I don't believe this. But Kenny got more than a scooter. He gained a community. Before I was struggling, I was alone, didn't have nobody in there, it was a struggle, but now I just feel so much better. That feeling is what he and his friend Amanda Klein are now sharing with veterans across the country. So back to Vicki. Your daughter Jennifer, she nominated you, Vicki. You will be getting a mobility scooter. And God bless you with that, and I hope everything turns out. 
Thank you guys so much. Kenny and Amanda have gifted new scooters to more than 50 veterans. It hits me so hard. I, I just got to break down and cry like I am now. And he never forgets. Vicki, I want to thank you for your service from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. See, this is why you have to love social media. He turned his following into a way to help others. Kenny, I see you. All right, we now turn to a remarkable teen who grew up using sign language with her friends and family, but noticed the lack of representation in books. So she took matters into her own hands. Michael George has the story. High school senior Kiana Tate is deaf, and she grew up signing with her friends and family. But the 18-year-old rarely saw anyone who looked like her in sign language books. So she created her own. Had you ever written a book before? Oh, no, this is my first experience trying to be published. It's just crucial. It's essential that black and brown individuals, you know, feel represented in life. It kind of, you know, makes you feel bad when you don't see yourself. Using pictures of those closest to her, she's published Signing with Kai. I'm extremely proud of her. Kiana's mother, Kadija, says her daughter is proving she can accomplish anything. It seems like she never lets somebody say, you can't do this. If they say that, that makes her go even harder. <laughs> Kiana plans to publish even more books. She wants to bridge the gap between the deaf and hearing communities. The letter I. I? Like this? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I'm here as living proof to show people. I can teach others. I can learn and I can be an educator. She can also yeah. be an inspiration. It's the letter I, right? I appreciate you because representation matters, like we always say. Okay, coming up, how a bookstore in Los Angeles is making brick and mortar cool again. And a dad who shared a story about his son wanting friends and how he gained more than 50,000 of them. Now we go to the UK where a dad named Kevin Harrison asked the internet for a huge favor and they came through in a big way. He wanted them to help his son find some friends and they gave him a birthday that he'd never forget. Caitlin O'Kane has more. Do you believe in wishes coming true? For 15 year old Daniel Harrison, one wish did. Daniel for the first time was asked at his special needs school to write two things that he'd like to achieve. Um, his first was learning to drive. And the second thing which surprised us was make some friends because we didn't understand that he understood the theory of friendship. And it happens a lot with children on the autistic spectrum because they play alone, they want to be alone. And Daniel's never ever talked to us about one tip feeling like he needs friends. So that shocked us to the core, really. Kevin Harrison of Nottingham often shares updates about his son on Twitter. But after posting about Daniel's wish on his birthday, he was astonished by the response. It was the number one trending story in America on Twitter and the world. And I'm sitting there thinking, what on earth have I done? And a lot of that was down to a Mark Hamill um, from Star Wars. The first person that actually retweeted it, famous person, was um, Russell Crowe that said, you know, the Australian actor that said, happy birthday, Daniel. The post resonated with many. In fact, Kevin and Daniel received 55,000 replies and counting. People want to be loved, don't they? People want to be liked. It's a universal feeling. Many of the replies were from parents with children who have autism too. It made me happy for Daniel, but you know, it, it's made me happy for parents and families and, you know, friends of autistic people across the globe. Kevin said Daniel jumped for joy at some of the responses. His birthday wish was fulfilled and served as a powerful example to others. You're not alone. You don't ever feel you're alone. Because I felt like that, and I know other families will. You're not alone. It's as simple as that. People do love you. Caitlin O'Kane for The Uplift. Happy birthday, Daniel. You got a friend in me. And if you need friends, reach out to us at CBS. We'll always wish you happy birthday. All right, coming up, the bookstore where you're not only going to want to pursue, but also take some photos in. What makes this the most Instagrammable bookstore in the world? Plus, our most viral videos of the week. 
Stick around. Welcome back to the Uplift. Come on in. And here are our most heartwarming videos of the week, starting with this very good dog. Natalie Hooper, a volunteer puppy raiser with Guide Dogs of America, showed off her well-trained golden retriever, Ridley, who was not at all tempted by the treats. Guide Dogs of America says this exercise helps trainees work on impulse control and leaving things alone unless otherwise instructed. It's an important skill to learn for working service dogs because they always need to be focused on their handler rather than things in surrounding environments. All right, this little one brightened the internet when she squealed in excitement seeing her grandmother. Now, even though her mom said that they were going to pick up grandma at the train station just 24 hours after they last saw her, still, two-year-old Evelyn was so excited to see her as if it has been years. Now, we all know that feeling we get when we see our favorite person. Okay, Evelyn, go ahead and squeal. I squeal sometimes, too. All right, this next one is like a combination of the previous videos. It's an animal that is excited to see someone. Take a look. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? Oh, hi, baby. Hi, yeah, I see you. I miss you. I miss you, Darla. How you doing, baby? Is that dad? I see you. Oh. Yes, yes, my sweet baby girl. I love you so much. Girl, I, never I miss you and I'll be home soon, okay? I'll always come home for you. I love you so much. Come on now, come on now, how good is that? That cat named Darla went viral for being attached to her dad, even if she can only hear his voice. Our next video comes from a dad who calls his one-year-old daughter, Dylan, a snack bandit. Here's why. Dylan, get out of the front. What the? Dylan. Open it. Dylan. Dylan, why is all these Cheetos on the floor? Dylan. Dylan. Oh, man. I love this video. I've seen it a thousand times. Now, if you like those viral videos, you can see many more heartwarming ones at our Facebook, facebook.com slash uplift news. Coming up, inside the most Instagrammable bookstore in the world, a labyrinth of books in downtown Los Angeles. And what makes it so special? Lee Cowan takes us inside. The death of the local bookstore at the hands of the internet has been predicted over and over again. Ironically, it's social media that is saving this 10,000 square foot literary labyrinth in downtown Los Angeles, recently named the most Instagram bookstore in the world. Lee Cowan takes us inside this unique store. It all starts at the steps. The promise of Westerns and thrillers and mystery lure you up. To a mythical, magical place. You almost want to get lost in this literary labyrinth. Here, books fly. Time stops. Gravity is suspended. Everywhere you look, books are celebrated. And where there aren't books, there's art. Everything from imagined space age gadgets to a woolly mammoth gazing down on the mammoth collection of books below. When you see it in person, it's a lot, lot better than in video. It's like vintage, very eclectic, it's unique. If you've never heard of the last bookstore in downtown Los Angeles, don't be the last to visit. It's a cavernous place where old media and social media collide. Sort of like the Big Bang, only quieter. Hashtag hungry Instagrammers eat up photo ops like catnip. While more traditional bookworms lounge on couches, lost in the universe at their fingertips. A lot of people just come in off the street and they don't even know what's happening, you know? <laughs> and so they're just like, what is this? What, you know, what's going on here? It's amazing. More than being visually stimulating, it, there's also an ambiance here that you can't deny. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Owners Josh and Jenna Spencer have been told that the last bookstore 
is one of the most Instagrammed in the world. They're fully aware of the irony that the digital age, often credited with killing books, is here keeping them alive. Well, that wasn't your intent, though, to make it Instagrammable, right? It was, actually. Everyone was talking about the bookstores being passe, and nobody was buying books anymore. And so I thought, well, I've got to do something to get people's attention, you know? So I was like, well, I'm just going to make something that looks really, really cool and that people are going to want to take pictures of, and then they're going to spread the word for us. And, and so they did. Beyond its photogenic properties, The Last Bookstore is a reminder that books are meant to be tangible. Turning a page instead of swiping one matters to a lot of folks. Just reconnecting myself to the past just by holding these books is golden. Paul Gardner is a visiting librarian. In a lot of ways, it's sort of like a pilgrimage. Yes, a lot of these books are old friends of mine that I haven't seen in forever. The last bookstore's warehouses are a rabbit warren of millions and millions of donated books stacked floor to ceiling. Easy peasy. And Josh and his team sort through every single one. So, I mean, that's kind of what we do all day is just dig for treasure. Growing up in Hawaii, Josh never imagined he'd one day open a bookstore, although there were some early hints. I mean, I've always been a reader. I mean, my mom likes to tell the story that I, you know, at five years old, my friends wanted me to go outside and play, and I had to tell them, no, I'm reading the dictionary. I can't come out right now. You know, so. <laughs> but life can turn a page for you, whether you want it to or not. I was 21, and uh, I was riding a moped and just got in a terrible accident, ended up being paralyzed from the waist down. That was clearly a new chapter in his life, which oddly circled right back to the beginning. Prior to that accident, I was very physical. I'd gotten away from my first love of reading. I was just more into playing volleyball and surfing and lifting weights and things like that. So the accident turned out to be a good thing in a way in that it thrust me back into the world of books because I was like, well, now I've got to figure out some other way to be, you know. He started selling cookbooks on eBay. Then he had a small store. And then he found this old bank, a beautiful relic, just like books, he thought. I just sat in here for a few hours, just kind of imagining what it could be. The wheels were turning. <laughs> They're still turning. So what was the bank's vault is now home to the horror and true crime yeah, section. It's fitting, yeah. <laughs> How fitting. For years, I've wanted to find like an old fashioned like electric chair and put it here in the center, <laughs> have like a prop, you know, but uh, I've never been able to find an electric chair for sale. So he may do with other oddities that. like a tunnel made of more than a thousand old volumes that his dad helped him build. Just how it stands is a secret that many have tried to uncover. Once in a while, somebody will manage to pry a book out of the tunnel and steal it. Seriously? And we have to figure out how to replace it, yeah. <laughs> Thieves aside, the book business is apparently booming. He and Jenna have opened a second store, Lost Books, where you enter through a twinkling jungle. And these are all real plants. These are all real plants, 365 real plants. Yeah, it's all growing, yes. And so the shape of the tunnel changes um, as the months move on. There's tropical fish, and the ceiling is covered with moss. And you can buy just about anything that's growing, right along with the books. So do people buy more books or more plants? That is the question. <laughs> it's so new they really don't know. It's a risky venture, just like the last bookstore was more than a decade ago. It didn't matter if I lost everything trying to do it. It was important to me. And I couldn't imagine anything else that I could personally do that was more important. He sees books as the keeper of human knowledge. Our history, our achievements, our dreams, his too. He could have given up after his accident, but books helped bring him back to a place of purpose and passion for which all readers should be thankful. That's the key to life in a lot of ways, is difficulties, obstacles, challenges. You know, that, that's the secret door that you have to go through to really get to the real good stuff of life. What I'll take away from this story, life is like a good book. Make your next chapter your best chapter. That's our show. I hope this news brightened your day and lifted you up. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>